Hi, I'm Greg Nagel, Education Director for the St. John's Riverkeeper. I was hoping that my plants would get some water today, but as you can see, I don't think Mother Nature is going to cooperate. But I have the perfect tool, something that will collect the rainwater rather than have it just wash down that storm drain. A rain barrel will not only save our precious drinking water, but also lower my monthly water bill. I mean, can you beat that? Making a rain barrel is easy, cost efficient, and you can make one right at your home. I'm here with Roger Linville today, who's gonna take us step by step through the process of assembling one of these, and actually show us how going back in the past, we can really protect our future. Roger? Good morning, Greg, how are you? Good to see you. And it's wonderful that such an ancient technique as rain barrels can make such a big difference in our lives today. It's a very simple thing to do, but it's really important in the summer when at least 40% of our water goes to our yards and our gardens. Okay, Roger, show us what we need to get started. Well, the first thing we need, Greg, is a plastic food grade rain barrel. The, uh, the plastic ensures that the material won't rust and it's easy to work with. You should first clean out the barrel with a mixture of one tablespoon of vinegar and a gallon of water. Then rinse it out and we'll let it dry. And while it's drying, we can gather our tools and materials together. You'll need a drill with a two inch hole saw bit and a one inch spade bit to make the holes. We'll also need a measuring tape, a sharpie marker, plumber's tape, some fiberglass window screen, scissors, a roll of paper towels, and some silicone caulk. For our spigot and overflow valves, we're using a three-quarter inch quarter-turn brass seal cock, a three-quarter inch PVC riser extender, two three-quarter inch by one inch PVC slip and thread adapters, and some one inch flat washers. If you want to connect your barrel to your gutters and downspouts, you'll need a hacksaw with a fine tooth blade and a flexible downspout extender. Now you can connect two or more of these rain barrels together, right? Sure, these are 55 gallon drums, so you can connect as many of these barrels together as you want, depending on how much rainwater you need to collect. But today, we're just gonna to put together one barrel and we're gonna connect a 15 foot garden hose to the overflow valve that'll go into the garden. Okay, looks like we're ready. What do we do first? We'll start by drilling the holes for the spigot and the overflow. Using a tape measure, I'll mark a line about seven inches up from the bottom. Now, why not further down? Well, this allows any sediment to remain in the bottom of the barrel so it doesn't clog the spigot. It also gives you a little extra height so you can fit a watering can underneath. Now, I'll make another mark about four inches from the top of the barrel, right above the spigot hole. This will be for the overflow. Okay, now, if you'll hold it steady, I'll use a one-inch spade bit and I'll drill a hole where I made my mark. Now, why do you even need an overflow? I mean, won't the water just spill over? Well, it could, but this hole can actually serve two purposes. The overflow can be connected to another barrel and another one down the line, according to how much rainwater you want to collect. But in our case, we only need one barrel. So we're going to connect the overflow to a garden hose, which is then going to drain off into the garden. Let's assemble the spigot. First, I'll wrap some plumber's tape around the threads on the adapter two to three times in a clockwise direction. Ah, now this I know. It's clockwise for a reason, right? As we screw the adapter into the spigot, we want the Teflon tape to run clockwise so it doesn't come loose. Then we lay a bead of silicone caulk around the bottom hole. Okay, Greg, now you get to make yourself useful. Finally, tell me what I need to do. I'll slide a flat washer onto a PVC adapter, and while you hold it, I'll lay another bead around the washer. The silicone will help seal the hole from leaking. Now with the barrel still on its side and both holes facing up, if you'll give me the adapter, I'll give you the spigot. I'm going to crawl inside, insert the adapter through the hole while you take the spigot and screw it on from the outside. Got it. Can you fit in there? 
it suits you. Uh, I think I can go one more turn. No, maybe not. Uh, just go ahead and tighten it as much as you want, and then we can rotate the whole assembly. Okay. All right, Roger, we're in. Okay, Greg, come on. Let's stand this barrel upright. Okay, as before, I've wrapped some plumber's tape around the threads on the adapter, and if you'll hold this, I'm going to lay another bead of silicone caulk around the outside of the top hole where we're going to put the overflow. And I also need to add a little bit of silicone around the threads on the adapter. And again, this will just make sure that we don't get any kind of a leak later down the road. Now, if you'll insert that from the inside, Greg, then I'll go ahead and lay another washer onto it from the outside. Now, when do you climb back in the barrel? That's in the next program. All right. Oh, that's looking good. Okay. Good. That's going to be a good seal. Okay, Greg, if you'll hold the adapter real tight, I'm going to screw the riser extender onto the threads from the outside, and we'll just tighten it by hand. Okay. Now... If you'll just take a paper towel and wipe some of that excess silicone from the inside, and I'll start to wipe it out from the outside. Wow, it's really actually starting to look like a rain barrel now. Yes, it is, and that's called river magic, Greg. Now, our barrel has this big top with this uh, removable ring. So how does this work? How do we get the rain inside the barrel? Well, we're going to put the ring on top of the barrel. We're going to take a two-inch hole saw bit. That will let the rain come into the barrel. We'll put some screen on, and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, now you'll notice when I'm drilling the holes, I'm not going to press down too hard because we don't want to crack the lid. Okay, Roger, I've cut out the screen bigger than our barrel top opening, but what is it for? Why do we need this? Well, by laying the screen on top of the barrel, we keep mosquitoes out. Nobody wants to create a mosquito breeding ground, and it also helps to keep debris and small leaves from going inside the barrel. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but why do we need that plastic top that you put the holes in? Well, during the dry season, Squirrels have been known to jump up on top of the screen, and if they're really thirsty, they'll claw their way through the screen to get at the water. And unfortunately, that could be their last drink since they might not be able to climb back out. So <laughs> the plastic lid just helps keep critters from climbing inside. That makes sense. We're into uh, conserving water and saving water, not injuring wildlife. You got it. Now, if you'll hold the barrel steady, I'll do the hard part, and I'll tighten down the lid, okay? And once we have this tightened, we can go ahead and figure out exactly where we're going to put it. Come on back. You're doing a great job, Roger. Yeah, gee, You're thanks, Greg. Job. Thanks. Okay, today we're going to set this rain barrel, and we're going to hook it up over by this downspout. And that'll direct a good, strong flow of water off the roof right inside. But that downspout goes all the way to the ground, and this barrel's three feet tall, so... How do we get the rain into the barrel? Well, we're going to build a platform here in front of the downspout. And that'll elevate the barrel up. And then we're going to have the downspout direct the water right into it. Got it. So what do we need to build this platform? We're going to use four concrete blocks with a 16 by 16 stepping stone laid on top. You need to make this platform both level and very sturdy, since once the barrel's filled with rainwater, it can weigh more than 400 pounds. So it needs to be in a flat and secure area. Okay, Greg, if you'll pick up the barrel and set it up on top of the platform, now we've got enough clearance so that once this is filled with rain, we can fit our watering can under here to fill it up. We're going to attach a short section of hose to the overflow valve and direct it to the garden. 
The last step is to modify the downspout to direct rain into the barrel. We'll start by making a mark where we need to trim the downspout. Using a hacksaw with a fine tooth blade, I'll shorten the downspout. These flexible extenders can be bent and lengthened, so we'll work it a little to get a good fit. Now that looks like it ought to work. Wow, Roger, this looks great. You just did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Greg. Anything for the St. John's Riverkeeper. Creating a river-friendly yard, getting involved in your local planning decisions, and practicing great water conservation techniques, just like using a rain barrel, is a great way to start being river-friendly. Please contact the St. John's Riverkeeper if you have any questions about rain barrels or how to be river friendly. We have a limited supply of already assembled rain barrels for sale and would be happy to recommend someone who can deliver a barrel and set it up for you.